G'day explorers. So today we're looking at the concept of livability. So how livable is a place? Here you see um, a snapshot from my town uh, where I live. Um, we have a beautiful zoo and is one of the many uh, features of our town that make it livable. So this is your vocabulary. If I get you to Pause the video here, write all of this down in your glossary or your vocabulary or wherever you write it. And that way you've got these concepts at front of mind to refer back to as we go. So also read them, don't just copy them down, actually pay attention to what's happening there because we'll refer to these through the lesson as we move on. All right, so livability. Livability itself describes like the setup conditions, that's what the frame conditions mean, like the conditions that are in the area set up for um, is this a place where you could have a decent life for the inhabitants of the city or a region um, communities uh, and this includes both your physical and mental well-being so a little bit in this case refers to the factors that make up a, that make a place desirable to live in or undesirable right like for example um, the economist every year puts out a list of um, well, they rank a bunch of cities and they come up with like the top 10, like 130 cities, but there's like the top 10 cities to live in and the bottom 10 cities to live in. And they use all sorts of ways to measure it, but they tend to be factors like this over here. Um, these factors, however, will change over time. Now that means two things. It means the factors in a region will change over time. For example, an area that might have had really excellent health services at one point has none to go on uh, later on or in a while um, it has really poor health services and then increases one that I can think of as an example is the town where I live um, 30 years ago with its indigenous community um, it had quite a combative relationship whereas over the last 30 years they've used the public spaces to celebrate um, our indigenous and aboriginal heritage in this town here. So now as compared to some of the towns you see around it, it has quite a vibrant Aboriginal culture, which is, you know, something I'm part of and my family's part of, which is really a wonderful thing. Uh, whereas, you know, 10, 20 years ago was not quite the way it was. And that's through these different factors that improve livability. You know, they sort of looked at those and worked hard as geographers to increase this aspect of our town. And the other way this changes is it changes over time for the individual. For example, if you're 15, a really important part of our town might be the local skate park. I know for my children, that's a really hugely important part. Um, for someone who's 40, for example, the local skate park might not be as big a pull factor to the town. It might not be as important an aspect of its livability. So perception of livability, right? Our perception of a livability has several competing factors. And that means that we have different factors all sort of jostling for what's going to be the most important to you. And I'll have a look, right? Let's go to demographics. Like that's like the ages of people who live there. For example, in Darwin in Australia, um, it is the youngest capital city. And that is a real pull factor for a lot of young people, but you know, not as much for older people in there. Um, the education, um, what education is available, um, what's around there for your community, for your children, for your adults, um, health and medical services. You can imagine that different ages, this is of differing importance. Uh, safety and crime. Is the crime really high? Is it quite low? Uh, reliable infrastructure. Um, do the bridges work? Do the roads work? You know, um, it, it's amazing how much if you see a town that has many, many, many giant potholes, um, that affects people's perceptions of what it's like to live there. Um, employment, well, that's got to be wonky, employment or a livable wage. If there are no jobs, it becomes a hard place to live in. Uh, the natural environment, access to that natural environment, uh, it's something that humans, we have a, a deep sense of connection with our environment. Um, and social interactions, you know, like how, is it an easy place to interact with the people around you? So these are push and pull factors, pull factors being things that pull people to town, pull the region, push being things that push them away. So these will determine how an individual or a community assesses the livability of a region over time. And again, they'll change over time. 
So let's have a look at that in particular. Uh, what makes a place livable is the push and pull factors, as we talked about already. Um, but for example, an active nightlife or pub and club scene might be a really important pull factor to someone who's single in early 20s and, and blah, blah, blah. But as you're approaching your 60s, for example, that might be less of a pull factor. You might be less worried about going out at night. In fact, um, people who have been out partying all night, walking home, making a lot of noise, if that's near your part of town, that might actually be a push factor that caused you to move away. Um, a pull factor for a 30-year-old might be access to quality schools for their children, whereas that's actually something that drives up the price of houses. So that might be a push factor for someone who's younger and doesn't have children or someone whose children are past that point or someone who has no intention of having children. So as we look at, for example, livability, we're using a geographer's tools, and that's the statistical index. So a statistical index is, in both geography and statistics, a composite statistic. It means we get other statistics, um, like, for example, how many hospitals per person, how many um, people for every in every square kilometer live, in it, live there, so population density. And we give each of those different statistics a certain ranking, depending on what we determine to be more important, and we combine them together, and that gives us a um, composite statistic or a statistical index. And we can use that to rank things. For example, um, here, the uh, Economist Intelligence, Intelligence Unit, um, they do, as I said earlier, a ranking of all the cities to live in, um, and in 2019, they found, for example, that Melbourne and Sydney and Adelaide were among the most livable cities um, in the world. Um, Vienna was number one, um, whereas Port Moresby, Dhaka, um, Karachi, and, a few, and you know all the red ones, that was their bottom 10. So they did this by using a collection of statistics. Again, they all had different rank rankings, and that made up their top sorry, and then they compile them together. That gives you a score and they then rank those scores. So for example, um, Melbourne has, you know, medium population density. It has, so that's gives it a high ranking on that. It has a lot of hospitals per person. So that goes up. The educational achievement of the average person in Melbourne is quite high. So that makes it go up and they add all those numbers together and compare it to all the other cities and they go, but Melbourne's the second best city in the world to live in. Um, Melbourne's always quite up there. So Sydney, it's always a bit of a fight between the two. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so I hope that made sense. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Um, if you know where your city lives on there, maybe put that down below. Let us know how your city fared. Ours is a small town, doesn't quite make it there. Um, but Sydney's our closest big city, so we're number three. Um, yeah, and so if you have any questions, put them in the comments below, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you for watching. Uh, keep exploring, people.